welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Hope everyone is doing great. If you are new here, you're welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, you are also welcome. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a long fitted dress with a double pillow neckline at the front. Then the back is going to have a zipper and also a lace up. So let's get started. So I have my basic pattern here. So I'll quickly explain the lines you're seeing here. So the, this line is a waistline, this is on the bust line, this is the bust point, then my chest line is somewhere here, okay? So the nipple to nipple distance is uh, 9 inches divided by 2, give me 4.5. So from here to here is 4.5, that is where my dart line is. So coming to the waist, my the waist I'm working with is uh, 37 inches divided by 4 will give us a... Uh, the by by four will give us nine one quarter. Then I added two inches of that allowance that will give us eleven one quarter plus one point five uh, side seam allowance will give us um, twelve. Will give us twelve uh, three quarter. I hope I'm right. Then coming to the chest line, the bust point. Sorry, the bust measurement is a uh, forty three inches divided by four will give us. 10 3 quarter plus 1.5 seam allowance will give us a uh, 12 1 quarter okay so the next thing we're going to do now is to take the dart of two inches that we've already added at the waistline so i'm going to be marking one one inch on each side of the dart leg okay so i will use pencil when i'm done i will now use uh, my this marker to highlight it okay so this is one inch here one inch here okay so coming to the under uh, bust line i'm going to be tightening the under bust by one point uh, one one quarter on each side of the dark leg so i'm going to mark one one quarter here and one one quarter here now if you don't want to do this if you don't want to tighten your under bust by one one quarter this one one quarter is not constant please but i i, I always use this whenever i am working with a bigger bust Okay, then for the bigger bust, I always use one one quarter to tighten the, uh, that is a one one quarter on each side of the dart to tighten the under bust. Then I use a uh, two inches for the dart uh, on the waist. Okay, if it's a plus size, I use more than this. It varies, it's not constant. So if you're working with a smaller, I can, if I'm working with a smaller bust, I can use a uh, three three quarter on each side. That's 1.5 dart allowance on the waist. Then I will now use uh, one, one one inch on the dart uh, under the bust. Okay, that is if I if I'm tightening the under bust, it will be one quarter bigger than what I use at the waist. At the waist, I hope I'm making sense. Okay, now that I added two inches that allowance at the waist, I've already marked it two inches one one inch on each side of the dart leg. Okay, now coming to the under bust. Instead of marking the same one inch, I tighten the under bust one one quarter on each side of the dart leg. Meaning that the under bust is tightened by one one quarter more than the under bust. Please, am I making sense? If I'm, if you don't understand this, what you're going to do is just to measure your round under bust, divide by two, whatever you have mark it on your underboss and what is left you now shear it on the dart leg to tighten your underboss but this very one works for me okay so i tighten the underboss by one one quarter on each side of the dart leg so the next thing i'm going to do now is to connect the points the underboss to the waist this way i will do the same on the other side then I will highlight it. So this video is going to be a bit long because I'm going to be explaining every process. Okay? So you have to be patient. So this is it. The next thing I'm going to do now is to form the bust curve. Okay, so I'm going to use this. And this is the way... I place the uh, curve ruler to form the bust curve. Okay, 
And I will use my pencil. Can you see? to highlight it again. Can you see? So the next thing I'm going to do now is to divide the shoulder slope by two. So the neckline I have here is 3 inches by 3 inches, but I'm still going to alter the neckline because it's very high. This is not the neckline I'll be working with, okay? So when I divide, I should have a 2.5. This is so that slope here. From here to here is 5 inches. Divide by 2 will give me 2.5. So I'm going to connect the point, I'm going to mark, then connect it to the bust point. But it's not going to rest directly on the bust point. So what I'm going to do now is from this point, I'm going to go up by 1 inch. And this is the one inch, can you see? So I'll connect from the on, uh, shoulder slope. I'm going to connect to that one inch I came up by, okay? And this is it. The reason for doing this is so that the bust area will not be looking pointed, okay? If you are not, if you are not a bust, if you are not on a big side, you can... Uh, skip this part but I would suggest that you do it so that you won't have any pointed uh, uh, pointed looking thing around your um, bust area okay so this is it so the next thing I'm going to do now is to measure the distance from bust uh, the bust point to the under bust so the distance from the bust point to the under bust is four inches Okay, so it's four inches. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to place my tape on the bust point line. This is the bust point, remember? I'm going to go up by four inches, and this is four inches here. So if I go by if I go up by four inches, that's this side becomes my yoke, and it's like the yoke is is too small. So I'm going to come down instead of using four inches, I'm going to use 3.5. So I'm going to mark. 3.5 here, then draw the line, okay? So this is 3.5, I'm going to I'm going to connect the point from a straight line, okay? So this becomes our over bust line, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut this out. Now before I do that, I'm going to mark the side that allowance. Now this half, uh, this front pattern is nine, is a 19, 19 inches long. That is the half length is 19 inches. And the back half length is 16 inches. My front half length is longer than the back half length by 3 inches because we have bust at the front, okay? What I'm using, the pattern I'm using is a, I'm using a, a bust that technique. So if you, are using a, if you are using the same front and half length, you already, already know how to go about it. So what I'm going to do is to mark the difference between the front and the back half length, which is 3 inches. So it's... From the bust point, I came down by 3 inches and mark. So this is my 3 inches. I'm going to connect it to the bust point line. Okay, this way. And this is, so this is our bust. 
that. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut this off. This is going to serve as our yield now. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off. So before I cut out the yolk, I want to tighten the overbust by one inch. Okay, so I'm going to place the tape on this line coming from the shoulder slope. Okay, this line coming from the shoulder, I'm going to place my tape there and mark one inch. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect back to the shoulder, uh, the boss point this way. Can you see? So, I'm still going to replace this that okay so I'll place my tape here and mark one inch so what I'm doing is replacing this that okay then I'll connect back to the ample this way So whatever I've taken out from this, I've already replaced it. Can you see? So I'll go ahead and cut this out now. So I'll keep this one aside, we still come back to this yoke. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut open this dart so I can close it the bust that. So I'm going to form this down. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to close up this gap we have here by connecting to the chest line this way. So I'll go ahead and cut out the pattern. So this is a new ample, so I'm going to cut this way.
you see? So the next thing I'm going to do now is the darts and the overboss. I'm going to cut it out. Can you see? So the next thing we're going to do now is from this distance, we're going to measure here, from here to here, we're going to measure and measure here to here. The reason why we are doing this is that sometimes you notice that one side is longer than one and it will, it will disturb you while trying to uh, join your, your pieces together. So what we have here is, um, is three and a half and I have a three one quarter here. So here I'm going to add one quarter to make up this place so that it will not be shorter than this side. So I'm going to keep this side, this one aside and come over to the yoke. So I'm going ahead to cut out the excess we have around the yoke so that I won't be confused by drafting. So coming to the down part of the yoke here, okay, I'm going to place my tape at the center front here and I'll go in by 1.5 and mark, okay, so that is it. So there's a line coming from the shoulder, remember, so that's the line, so I'm going to highlight it now so you can see this why drafting your yours don't use uh, this marker because it will add to your measurement please use pencil okay why i'm using marker is that you can so that you can see it clearly okay so this is a line coming from the shoulder okay so i'm going to place my tape on the 1.5 i mark earlier and measure the distance i have there so the distance i have there is three and three one quarter okay so that is how much open the keyhole line the keyhole is going to be okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to place my tape at this down part and go up by 3.5 okay that's the height of the uh, opening okay so i'm going to make a mark that this is it and from this point i'm going to draw a triangle a line to meet that point to form a triangle this way already this marker is adding to my measurements and i want to use this pattern please let me use viral and see whether it will show can you see it so from that 1.5, I drew a line to me, the point I marked earlier, that is a 3.5, okay? So this is the key goal. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to mark one quarter around the triangle because that's the measurement, that's the seam allowance. I don't want it to be half, so that's the seam allowance I'll be having. So I'll go ahead and do it so I can understand what I'm trying to explain here. Okay, can you see? So this becomes the sewing allowance for the opening. Okay, so for the neckline, the my the shoulder I want I want I want the shoulder slope to be two and a half. Okay, but because I've already added a allowance around the armhole, I'm going to be including the allowance as well. So all together I should have a three and a half. When I take half here, close the armhole. Or fix the sleeve then turn the neckline i should be i should be having a 2.5 left okay so this is the point that is a three and a half point so what i'm going to do now is to form my new neckline which is a v shape okay so i'll be using this curve ruler to do that So this is it. Can you see? So I'll go ahead and cut this out. And cut out the needle. Shape. 
going to. So I'm going to transfer this to the fabric. So coming to the back. So for the back, uh, you can see I have my pattern ready. So I'm going to quickly explain this. This is where I have my chest line. This is where I have my chest line. And this is the waistline. I've already taken a data of uh, one inch around the waist. Remember that the bust distance as the nipple to nipple the distance is four and a half. So from this place to this place is four and a half. This is the zipper allowance, okay? So the next one, next thing I'm going to do now is to go up by from my chest line. I'm going to go up by one inch, okay? And that's the dotted line you're seeing. I don't know whether you can see it. There's a dotted line here, so I'll quickly highlight it so you can see it well. So this is it. Now you see, it's even better to work with this bio than to work with a marker. So this is it, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is to extend the dart leg up to that new line. This way. And you see. So I'm going to be tightening the back by one one quarter. By, sorry, by one quarter on each side of the dart leg. So I'll measure one one quarter at this new line around the dart leg okay measure one quarter on the other side can you see so i'm going to be connecting this back to my waist this will eliminate any form of gaping around your back remember that the back is going to be a bit open okay so you need to tighten the back so that it won't be gaping okay so can you see so the next thing i'm going to do now is to measure the distance of our shoulder slope remember i'm using three and a half for the front i also use three and a half for the back please remember i've already added the allowance around my armhole that's why i'm using three and a half if you've not added any allowance at all please remember to add your allowance don't say because i use three and a half you're going to use three and a half and at the end of the day you still add allowance you won't get exactly what i'll be getting okay you won't get the shape okay so that is that so what i'm going to do now is to connect to this point i will tell you why i'm connecting to this point can you see instead of connecting to the, the, the nipple to nipple line sorry the dance line at the middle i connect to this first one now i need half inch to close up this my yoke this is going to serve as my yoke now from here it's going to serve as the yoke for the back or the extension of the back whatever you choose to call it okay now remember i'm going to turn it with a lining by half inch so by the time i turn it with a lining it's going to the the uh, this distance is going to go in okay so uh, by the time i'm fixing this extension i'm going to be it will be it will now be on this that here it's going to align with this line that is this opening because i'm going to open up this that please let me not confuse you more let me just cut this out so they can see so we are done with the back okay so i'll quickly cut this that off so i can see what i'm trying to explain Please, you are not cutting on this chest line. Remember that we came up at one inch. But if you want your yoke to stop at the chest line, you can go ahead and do that. That's if you want your back to be too low, you can go ahead and do that. Can you see? So I'll cut out the dart now. Cut this one out. Now, looking at this, you can see that it's not matching. Please let me cut this out so that you will not be confused. Okay. 
you are still confused by the time you watch the video over and over again you understand what uh, i'm trying to explain at it see you can see that the yoke is longer by half inch so by the time i turn it with the lining it will now align with this lower part hope you get it now so this is the second part so i'll quickly level them so i will not be confused this is the waist where i have the waist this is the center see this is center and this is side then this arrow represents the waist, okay? So I won't be confused, can you see? So, for the lace-up, remember we are fixing the zip, we are going to, the back is going to have zip and also a little, okay? So what for the lace-up, what I'm going to do now is to cut a, um, a piece of fabric on fold and it's going to be two inches okay on fold you can do 2.5 if you want yours to be the width to be bigger you can do for 2.5 and while you are doing that you're going to measure whatever you have to measure here we have eight inches so while cutting you're going to instead of cutting eight inches you're going to cut seven and a half then you close the top part by half inch close the down part by half inch by the time you fix it, it will not be directly on this line. I will explain when I'm done explaining it. But by the time I'm, I'm, I'm cutting my it, or by the time I'm fixing my it. But let me explain first. So you're going to, instead of the distance from here, from this top part to the waist is 8 inches. So while cutting the, my, I'll cut 7 and a half. Now, please... <coughs> Yes, I'm going to cut seven and a half. Now, while cutting seven and a half, while instead of uh, please, while cutting seven and a half, you're going to include your seam allowance to close it up and the down part. Okay, please don't forget that. But I'm going, going to cut eight inches. I'm going to cut seven and a half so that by the time I'm fixing it, it will be from the waist, it will be one quarter inch shorter than the actual length of the fabric and one quarter shorter than the top of the space so that it won't come or block my way while fixing or trying to turn my neckline with a lining okay i hope i'm making sense so when i'm done doing my i will still show you to explain more so that is all for this pattern so what i'm going to do now is to transfer to my fabric okay so I also pick, I will quickly show you how to cut out the lower part for the benefit of those that might be seeing this for the first, the first time or for the benefit of the beginners that don't know how to cut a perfect fitted uh, pencil skirt. I'll also be showing the lower parts, but I'll, I've already cut it out, but I will explain, okay? Okay, I've gone ahead to transfer my pattern to my fabric, as you can see. This is the front piece. And you see, I've also iron interfacing and part the front. So these are the front piece. You can see I've uh, iron interfacing and also part it. And there's the middle part, middle piece. Can you see? And this is the yoke for the front. The one that has the, the keyhole line, the keyhole on it, okay? So this is it. Can you see? So this is how it's going to look like by the time I'm done fixing it. Can you see? Can you see? Okay, so for the back, these are the back piece. This 
these are the back piece. Okay. And for the yoke of the back, for the yoke of the back, this is it. And you see, and there's a second bone. And you see, and I've gone ahead to cut out a long piece of fabric for the lacing. Okay, so this is where I'll be fixing the highlight on. I use satin. You can use your fabric if you don't want to use a different fabric. And for the rope, rope, I'll also be using the satin for the rope. Okay, so if I want to fix it, this is how to go about. Meanwhile, the width of this is 5 inches, unfold is 2.5. Then the length should be the length of this. Uh, the length of this lower part of the back okay so i'm going to place it like this then use this other part place it on top and sew by half inch okay remember that i'm going to close up the 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 down and the down part of this fix and the lower part of it sorry the upper part and the lower part then i'm going to place it a uh, three quarter inch before this top part so that by the time i'm done fixing it together with this piece it won't be uh, uh, it won't come up to this level. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. I know I'm going to fix this. So if I don't do it three quarter below the, this upper one, you'll find out by the time I fix this upper part, that is this this uh, this yoke, it will it I won't be able to flip this this way. Do you understand? So I'll go and do this, and I will show you so that you understand clearly what I'm trying to explain. So for the lining, these are my lines, and you see. So I'm going to go and uh, couple the front and the back, and I will come back and show you what to do next. So I'm done with the front, as you can see. You can see the keyhole neckline looking so clean and neat. Can you see? Can you see? And there's the back. I've also gone ahead to fix the ridgeling bone in at the back. Can you see? There's a one here, another one here. It's inside the same allowance, another one here. Okay. So for the front, for the back, I've already coupled the back for without uh, turning it with the lining. I've not turned it with the lining yet. So for this placket where I'll be fixing the eyelets. You know, I said you should minus half inch from whatever you are going to have here as the length of the lower part of the back, okay? So from here to here, I got 8 inches and I asked you to minus. If you are going to have 8 inches when you are done with yours, which I doubt because we don't have the same measurement, you are going to be minusing half inch from whatever you get, okay? Why you are doing so is that by the time you close the top part of your placket and the down part of the placket, and fix it, it will be quarter inch away from this top part. So that by the time you turn with the lining, it will not interfere with the lining and the top part, okay? The same thing for the waist. By the time you uh, fix the upper part to the lower part of your gown, this will not uh, interfere with the waistline, okay? So it's one, one quarter inch away from the waistline because we're going to be turning this by half inch. So by the time, look at, by the time you turn it, you see that it's quarter inch before the waistline so that's what i was trying to explain so another thing is the the yoke that's this uh, strap you can see where it is it's directly on the dart line can you see it's directly on the dart line can you see so that's that so the next thing i'm going to do now is to go and turn this with the lining okay so for the lower part of the dress i've already gone ahead to cut it out and this is it so for the benefit of those that would like to know how i achieve this it's very simple okay it's a fitted dress okay so here i mark out the waistline which is a 36 inches divided by four will give me a nine one quarter yes nine one quarter plus one and a half uh, side seam allowance will give me ten three quarter okay so i mark the hip depth which is nine nine and a half because by the time i i join this to the upper part i should have nine inches okay and the half length um knee length is 18 inches uh the knee length i minus whatever i have as my hip minus two inches from that mark as the heel uh 
knee length. Here at the hip, I have uh, 12 inches is 48 divided by 4 will give me uh, 12 inches. So plus one and a half, uh, one and a half uh, uh, sewing allowance will give me 13 and a half. So what I have around my hip here is 13 and a half. When you minus 13 and a half, minus 2 from 13 and a half, you should have a 11 and a half. So uh, the, above the knee or the knee area, I mark 11 and a half. From the waistline to the above the knee is 18 inches, okay? So I mark 11 here, 11 and a half, sorry. I mark 11 and a half as the width, then continue with 11 and a half to, down to the down part of the skirt, okay? So from the knee down to the hem part of the skirt, I have 11 and a half. So I now connect to my hip and cut it out. So coming to the back, what the difference between the back and the front is just the zipper allowance. And I also added a little around the hip so that it will create a bust, um, a bust shape for us, okay? Though it's not that obvious, but I will still show you. So coming to the back, this is the back and this is the front. I don't know whether you can see it. So this is the front. The back of the, the sorry the front of the skirt and this is the back of the skirt now i'm coming to where i have my hip at uh, the center back of the skirt of the back now i added around that i added a one, one inch from the waist down to the hemline i added one one inch for zipper allowance now I'm coming to the area where i have my hip i add instead of adding one inch for the zipper allowance i added one one quarter because i want to create a space for the butt okay then i connect i shape it uh, to where i have my knee and also shape it to the waistline i hope i'm making sense let me arrange this i'm explaining this for the benefit of those that doesn't know how to cut a perfect straight fitted uh, skirt okay so let me arrange this so that you can understand what i'm trying to explain so, like I said earlier, I said the, dif the difference between the back and the front is a zipper allowance at the back, okay? So, this is the back and this is our front. Now, for the back, I measured a uh, one, one inch from my waistline down to the hemline, one, one inch for zipper allowance. Now, coming to my hip, hip area, instead of marking one inch for the zipper allowance, I marked one one quarter because that quarter i'm using that quarter to create a space for the board so that the board can sit properly you can so that the board can sit properly okay so the next thing i did is to connect that one one quarter to the waist and connect to the uh, above the knee remember that above the knee or the knee height is 18 inches so that is what you are seeing here. I don't know whether you can see. There is a, a, a small shape you are seeing here. Okay. So that's that for the back. Then the allow uh, the the lining. The male fabric is longer than the lining by three and a half inches. So that's all for the. Back. Now, I also added that allowance at the back, but I didn't add at the front. I don't always like that around my front, but at the back, I added. So, look at this. You can see this is the front and this is the back. This is where I added half inch, uh, sorry, one inch for the dart at the back, okay? So, I'll quickly go and couple this and I'll come back and show you. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you how to cut your sleeve. Now, the sleeve I'm, I'll be working with is a sleeve so what I'm, go I'm going to do now is to shape it there's there is no much a um, thing about this sleeve it's just get the length of your desired length this might be my the length I'm working working with is 12 and a half and the width of this sleeve is a uh, 22 and a half now for you to know how much you're going to cut for the width of your sleeve, what you're going to use to determine that is the upper part of your arm. That is the top palm or your bicep, okay? So the bicep I'm working with is 15 inches, okay? It's 15 inches. Sorry, the length, this, I'm cut, the, the width of this 
sleeve is not 22 sorry sorry about that it's not 22 the width of the sleeve is 11 inches because i'm cutting the both sleeve together i'm cutting the the, the two piece together okay so it's 11 not on fold please it's 11 on fold okay 11 on fold so when you open up you should have a 22 inches okay so this is it so the next thing we're going to do now is to mark the bicep height and the bicep height i'm working with is five inches so this is five inches here so the next thing i'm going to do now is to connect this way create a or form a sleeve uh, shape this way can you see then i will cut it out so i'm cutting both the lining and the main fabric together so i'll go ahead and fold my lining into four into two sorry then place it under the lining this way under the department fabric this way and i will go ahead and cut it out you can see that this gun clip is very simple i also have a video on how to cut a gun sleeve in case you want to learn more okay so i'll be leaving the link in the description box so this is it can you see so what we're going to do here is just to pleat this part okay pleat then turn it with the lining i can as well fix a regime uh, sorry not a regime but i'm going to fix a my a clean I, I'm, I'm not sure about that so by the time i turn with the lining and i don't like the effect it's giving me i can i can go ahead and add a, a, a my um, what's it called my clean -oling or iron a headset to it to give it some form of structure so that's that for the sleeve so i'll go ahead and couple the dress and i'll come back to show you what to do next so i'm done with the dress as you can see it's looking so beautiful can you see okay so there's the lower part i don't know whether you can see it well Can you see? And this is the back. Can you see? So I've also cut out a long uh, piece of fabric, use it for a rope. The length is two and a half yard and the weight is two inches. Okay. So this is how the inside looks like. Well finished, very clean. Now for the sleeve, for you to know how much uh, you cut for your sleeve, uh, it's just to measure your bicep, your round bicep or your top arm, then you increase by 5 inches. That is, if your bicep is 15, you add 15, 5 inches to it, making it 20. So my client doesn't want her sleeve to be that big. So what I did is just uh, increase... Her bicep is five inches, sorry, it's 15 inches. That is, her round bicep is 15 inches. And I increased to uh, 22. That is for the seam allowance, okay? So that's that for this beautiful gown. I'm loving the gown, so beautiful. And well finished. Can you see? Looking so beautiful. So that is it for this dress. After fixing the eyelid, this is what it looks like. Can you see? Thank you so much for watching and see my next one.